Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Praise be to the Most High God, who has given us his holy word, and another day in which we can consider it and obey it. Hallelujah. So, as you can see from the title of this video, I want to talk to you, my sisters, today about managing time at the end of time. Glory be to God. This is one of the things that we as Christian women worry about the most and try to figure out how to handle the most, managing time. You know, there's a saying in the world that says, a man's work is from sun to sun, but a woman's work is never done. And while that's not the Holy Scripture, there's a lot of truth to that, especially those of us who are married women with children, who have a household to manage, who might have many other things to consider as well. However, all Christians are commanded to seek Jesus Christ first, whether they be a married woman or a single woman or a mother, a single mother, an elderly woman. We are all commanded to walk in the same way. And when we're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, we conform ourselves to, to the Word. And we don't try to conform the word to ourselves. So we don't say things, my sisters, like, well, I just can't abide in the scripture because I have little children. That is something that might feel true, but it isn't true. Verily, I say unto you, we are all given the same amount of time every single day, be you man or woman or, or a cat or dog. It, it, there's the same amount of time in everyone's life. But people, and women also, have choices about how they regulate their time. And there are ways in which we can either make things way more complicated and heavy, or we can make them clear and simple and gentle. We can be gentle in the way we live our lives, even if we have many children, even if we have a big house to take care of and many things to, to do in that house. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is that is in our life to do, there is a way that is right. There is a way that is right to walk. So I want to begin today in James chapter 4, and let's begin in verse 13. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word today. Go to now ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year, and buy and sell, and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. But for ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings, and all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Here we're reading in the Holy Scripture, that whatever we think we're doing, whatever our plans are or what we think we're going to do, whether it's going to school or getting married or having children or maintaining a house or even having employment because some women have to work as well. It doesn't matter what those things are. We need to recognize that we don't boast in those things. Those are thing, things that are something that we do while we're in this world. And I'm not saying they're not important. What I am saying, though, is that we want to remember that everything we have is from the Lord. And it is in the Lord that we live and in his word. So let's go to Luke, the gospel according to Luke. And chapter 4, hallelujah, and verse 4. And Jesus answered him, saying, so here Jesus is answering the devil who is tempting him. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word of God. So a Christian's life, the spiritual life, the way that we exist in our eternal life is to abide in the eternal and perfect word of God. And I know I say that a lot, but it's true. And it's really necessary for us to remember this as Christian women. It's so easy to become distracted with the needs of the children, the needs of the household, our own needs to, to do various things, getting money into the household if we're a single mom, for example, or how to serve our husband, how to please our husband. And the day can get away from us before we even know it. And it's the end of the day. And we've been wrestling with things of the world all day. And we're worn out and weary and frazzled. Maybe we're irritated. Maybe we're we're repenting of the way we acted during the way. And why does this happen? This happens because we have allowed ourselves to become distracted. Now, there are many things that can distract us besides things that are a woman's obligation to do. So if we serve in a family, yes, it's our obligation to care for the house and the children and our husband or our elderly parents or one another, no matter what our living situation is. Those things are part of a Christian's walk, a woman's walk in particular, caring for the house and the family. But we don't want to think that those are the only things that distract us because of a truth. There are many other things that distract us. So I want to talk about this a little bit, but first I just want to reemphasize that our life, the way that we live, and the way that we will gain the kingdom of God is to live by the word. And that means that, yeah, we know we have to eat bread, but we also have to eat that bread from heaven, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. So let's go now to Psalm. So let's go to Psalm 101, starting in verse 2. I will behave myself wisely and in a perfect way. O oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. So we all live in a time where there are many distractions beyond the things we have to attend to, my sisters. Things like internet research about certain diseases or, or certain uh, problems with the wicked devices of men, if you get my drift. Hallelujah. Things where we end up thinking that we're serving God when really what we're doing is we're trying to do things our own way by setting the wicked oracle of Google before us. And I'm not saying that Google isn't useful. Sometimes it is. If you need to know like directions about how to get to a certain place or, or uh, what the weather might be during the day or something like that. But Google is not meant to be a substitute for seeking God and his word and asking him about how to order our day. And the truth is this. If we want to manage our time, we have to do it the way God commands us to. So you might say to me, you might say, uh, how can I walk within my house with a perfect heart? How is that even possible for any person? Well, we can consider what Jesus Christ had to say about this. Let's go to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Jesus Christ said in verse 17, starting in verse 17, Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draft? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat 
with unwashing hands defileth not a man. Glory be to God. You see, a human heart is much like a computer. If you put bad information into a computer and then ask the computer to function properly, it won't. Garbage in, garbage out, as they say. Or as they say, you are what you eat. So Christians eat the Word of God, and we eat the Word of God every single day. We don't fast from the Word of God. We might fast from literal bread and meat, but we do not fast from the Word of God. And if we try to, what will happen is very quickly our heart will be filled with other stuff because we live in a fallen and wicked world. So we'll start to think our own thoughts and have our own ideas. We'll start to be carried about with every wind of doctrine. We'll start to make mistakes because we're not seeking truth where it is found, which is in the Holy Word of God. Instead, we're being led by our feelings and our inclinations. We're doing what James told us not to do in James 4. We're starting to think that our plans are more important than abiding in the Word of God. It says in Hebrews 9, 27, and I'm not going to read this for you right now, that it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. It's also written in the scripture, and and I'll put the, the scripture in the description box under the video, that Jesus Christ said that we would be judged by the word. We're judged by the word. So we can't live right if we're living apart from the Word of God. And again, this is true for married women, for married women with children, for single moms, for elderly women who are alone and have to work or what have you. It does not matter. It does not matter. If Jesus Christ said that we live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, that means that if we're not abiding in the Word, we're we're bringing upon ourselves confusion and delusion and destruction because what he said here is that what proceeds out of the heart so our own ideas our own imaginations our own plans proceed evil thoughts murders adulteries fornications thefts false witness blasphemies so if we want to not be defiled we want to Remember that we abide in the secret place of the Most High God every single day. And that means that we don't abide either with things in our heart and our mind that don't belong there. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Psalm 101. Let's just read this because this is so easy to understand, but it's not necessarily easy to do because, you know, our flesh likes to rule us. It likes to rule us. But it says here, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Well, how can we have a perfect heart? We put into our heart the holy and living word of God. So let's go to First Peter chapter 1 and verse 25. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. The word of the Lord is eternal life. I want to show you something very interesting about the word of God. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4. Starting in verse 12. For the word of God is quick. And it doesn't mean it's fast. It means it's alive. That's what quick means. We know as women when we were pregnant, or you might not have had a baby yet, but when your baby starts to move inside of you, they call that quickening. So you feel the life move within you. So the word of God is quick. And we feel it move within us. It brings forth life. It is eternal life. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper 
than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and is of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. What I would say, my sisters, is this, and I certainly don't know everything, but when we're seeking God in his word and in prayer, even if we take 10 minutes or three minutes before we begin our day, if we do this, if we do what Jesus Christ commanded and seek first the kingdom of God, then, as it is promised in his word, all these things are added unto us. We seek first the kingdom of God. So let's just go there. I want to show you this because verily it's very simple, but people get confused and, and they don't do it. And then when they don't do it, they say, oh, I don't have enough time. But the truth is, is that when you do this, you will have enough time. Jesus Christ says here, starting in verse 31, therefore take no thought saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? So Jesus Christ wasn't telling a godly woman, a Christian mother or wife, or a single Christian woman, to not be concerned about what the family eats, or, or what they drink, or how they should be clothed. Rather, he said this, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see, if we want to be a competent woman, a competent godly woman, and we want our, our household to run smoothly, our children to act properly, to have needs and, and, and emotional needs and spiritual needs taken care of in the family, if we want to be able to attend to all those obligations, the way that we do that is we seek God first. And the way we find God is in, pardon me, it's in his holy word. It's in his holy word. Let's go to Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Hallelujah. Let's read here, starting in verse 17. Well, let's start in verse 16. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. See, you can't be a Christian if you're not talking to God. Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, came into the world to make it so that you could be in a covenant with a living God by being baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins and be filled with the Holy Ghost so that you could be in a relationship with the living God. And if you're a Christian and you're trying to live godly and holy and run a household and raise your children or whatever it is that you do, if you're not seeking God, if you're not asking him the way to go and abiding in his holy word, you won't know. And you'll start to fall into things that cause you to be tossed about with every wind of doctrine, such as the internet. And then what you speak and what you do will proceed from your heart that has been corrupted. If we want a clean heart, this is what Jesus Christ says in his word. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Starting in verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it, that he might sanctify 
and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. You see, we're filthy if we don't take a shower in the morning, my sisters. We need to take a shower in the morning, if at all possible, because if we don't, our flesh will begin to stink. And the same is true for a Christian that they need to be washed in the word of God every single morning before they act and before they speak. Because if they don't do that, what they do is going to not only defile them, but the people around them. So yes, we can set priorities about what it is we want to do with our lives, with pursuing what we need to do to get provision in the house, what we need to do to make sure the children are attended to. Our husband, of course, needs to be fed. His clothes need to be taken care of. We want to love him, but we have to start at the right place. And the way we start our day is to seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. And that isn't found by our own feelings. It's not found by anything but getting before the throne of grace on our knees and asking God to guide us in his word and then opening the word and allowing him to speak to us. If we have concerns, if we have worries, if we have cares, we cast all our cares upon him for he careth for us. If we don't know what to do, if we feel overwhelmed, if we ask God in Jesus' name to give us strength, to give us wisdom, he will. But if we don't ask and if we don't seek him to know those things, we'll start to run out of time. Now, the thing is, is that it is appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment. And we might think, oh, the end of the world is coming next week and get all worried about how it is to talk to people and start commanding people to do things that they have nothing to do with obeying the gospel. You see, all Christians, be they male or female, are commanded to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ unto the lost. It's a victory for Satan if you think that God doesn't want you to speak the word of God, but rather he wants you to just attend to the needs of your family. Every Christian is saved in this way. So let's go. And I'm talking about Christians here. Let's go to Romans. Romans and chapter 9, I believe. Yes, Romans chapter 9. No, Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou, sh if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now this is not how a sinner gets saved from the power of darkness and sin. This is how a Christian walks in a way that will ensure their entrance into eternal life. And this is commanded unto every Christian. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. So every Christian confesses with their mouth the Lord Jesus. And while women don't do it the way men do it, we still do it. We confess with our mouth the word of God to our children. We speak to our husband who speaks to us as well about the word of God. We abide in the word of God. We abide in prayer. And then we are sanctified. And then we are sanctified. We are made holy. Then what proceeds out of our heart and our mouth is the word of faith which we preach. The scripture does not say that women are, are suffered not to preach. The word of God says that a woman is suffered not to teach, 
nor to usurp authority over the man. And that's in the body of Christ. That has nothing to do with a woman preaching the word, maybe to the man at the bus stop who asks her about her head covering or her Bible that she's reading. You see, a lost soul is a lost soul, and they all need to hear about Jesus. And if we don't speak about Jesus Again, to our family, to our children, to our grandmother, to those who are lost around us, as a godly woman would do, with her head covered and with a meek and quiet spirit. If we don't do that, we won't be saved. We won't be saved. Because there is no such thing, as a dear brother often says, as a quiet Christian. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. My sisters, let us not forget that Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, was crucified and then resurrected by his Father, and that we can share in that resurrection if we believe that. We don't forget about that and start get, getting all worried about this big thing that's happening in the world. Because there's a lot of big things that have always happened in the world. Rather, rather, let us abide in the word. Let us abide with God because that's why Jesus Christ saved us. When we were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, it wasn't so that we could busy ourselves with our own plans and ideas and start to fret about all the things in the world. No, ever since I can remember, people have been saying, oh, it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world. Do you remember these things? Do you remember how often you've heard these things? Where everybody's freaking out because there's going to be this power outage or this war or, or this election fraud or what have you, this disease, this wicked device of the United Nations. You see, Christians don't abide in those wicked things. We abide in the word and then we have perfect peace. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Unto salvation. So when we believe, we do what the word of God says. Hallelujah. 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 Let's close now. I want to go to Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6. My pages won't turn today. Hallelujah. So let's read here. In verse 15, this is part of the spiritual armor that every Christian puts on every day. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So how are we going to speak the gospel to people, my sisters, if we're not putting our shoes on in the morning? That means that we put our shoes on, we abide in the scripture and in prayer. We ask God how to testify unto people in the morning whether it's our three-year-old, whether it's our grandmother, whether it's our neighbor next door, or the person at the farmer's market or the grocery store. We put our shoes on so that we can walk right as a Christian and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. And then throughout the day, we continue in the word of God. Jesus Christ said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So we continue in the word throughout the day, morning, noon, and night. And the way to plan this is really simple. When you get up in the morning, you ask God to guide you in, in the word. That's what I do. And then at noon, when it's time to eat or it's time for the children to eat, we pray again. We seek the Lord again. We ask him to sanctify the word, the food, pardon me, with the word and with prayer. And we share the word of God 
with our children, when we all sit together to eat, or when we take a break at work. We open the Word of God while we eat, and everybody has time to chew. So we have time to chew. We have time to look at the Word of God, and you're not talking when you're chewing. So it's time that you can use to spend time in the Scripture, my sisters. And you might say, oh, but I can't do that because of this or that, but you can. We all can, because Jesus Christ didn't command us to do something and then not make a way for us to do it. Hallelujah. And then at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we get into the Word of God just a little bit. And if you're too tired to read, put on an audio Bible and listen to the Word of God. Get on your knees and ask God to help you to sleep, to take the cares of the day away from you, to forgive you for any dumb thing you did, because I know I do dumb things. Maybe not you, but I do. To ask God to forgive you and help you to do better moving forward. You see, this is how we walk as a Christian. And if you're a Christian, if you've been baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins, and you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God, or you're waiting for it, it makes no difference. We are all commanded to continue in the Word of God. And if we don't, what will defile us and all those around us is what comes forth from our heart. And the human heart is desperately wicked. The only way to be clean, the only way to be ready when Jesus Christ comes for us is to let him wash us by the word. And the thing is this. Tomorrow morning, there could be a nuclear bomb that would blow Sister Abby away. Or Sister Abby might collapse with a heart attack and go home to be with Jesus. It makes no difference. When we die, that's when time stops. And then after that, the judgment. So let us take heed about what we concern ourselves with, my sisters. Let's stop being so concerned with what the government is up to, or what the CDC is up to. Let's start to be concerned with our holy relationship with the living God. Let's start to abide in him. And what I can guarantee you is this, that what Jesus Christ said is true. When we seek him first, then all these other things are attended to with gracefulness, with discretion, and we become ambassadors for peace. I pray this message has blessed you, my sisters. It blessed me to present it to you. Feel free to email me if you like or to put a comment in the comment section underneath the video. I remain here to serve you in Jesus' precious name. Amen.